What's up, Rosones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a pretty big video. <laughs> so, yesterday, well, let's talk about last night. Last night, frickin' the Bobby Dots conclusion has been leaked. Um, it's it's sad to people who are unable to read the leaks, or not unable, but who don't want to read the leaks because it kind of locks them out of the community for a good month or so, and that isn't very good. Um, but it's good for us. <laughs> I'm joking. So, of course, there are going to be major spoilers for GGY, or probably Gregory, uh, in Bobby Lott's conclusion, uh, which is book five in Tales of the Pizza Plex. Um, hello, by the way. I'm up in the top left corner, I think. And um, this is me. This is Ozone. Uh, and I thought I would do kind of like a face cam reaction. Um, let me know if you like this or like prefer it or not. I, I thought it would add some add something extra to the video than just me scrolling through Discord. Um, and I hope that you are able to actually see the the Discord. I realize I just flashed my OBS, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, we're gonna get straight into this. Thank you, Anton, for leaking it, but also I hate you. Um, let it be known that there's gonna be. <coughs> Sorry. Let it know there's probably going to be some swear words in this, because and Tom. Um, and also, of course, spoilers for GGY. Um, apparently this story is, it's got a major lore significance. Um, so I'm excited to see what that's going to be. This is why I put a face cam on in the first place, because my reaction probably is going to be completely silent, but I'm going to be like this. So, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's why. Anyway. Uh, let's just stop talking and get straight into it because I'm so excited. If you haven't read the preview, make sure you read the preview or go and listen to my audiobook of it, uh, which is one of my last videos that I uploaded. Probably the last I, I uploaded, actually, yeah. Anyway, preview summary, just in case you didn't. Tony is a young, aspiring investiga investigative journalist who's been assigned to write a group project with his friends using pen names, Boots and Rab, for Dr. Rabbit. Hmm... So, oh, Rab is a new kid in town and he's rather mysterious to Tony as he doesn't know much about his life. Firstly, is that like a reference to the new kid? I don't think it is, but that's just like completely out of the blue. Like, hmm, make, because that's what Kelsey did. He hung out with two boys every time. So that's just, I'm just saying. And also Rab, as in a rabbit hole, and the description of this story says that it leads him down a rabbit hole with no escape or something like that. So um, that's something to note. Um, as they go to the Mega Pizzaplex Fazcade one day, Tony notices something strange. A player by the name of GGY has consistently impossible high scores on the arcade machines. Who could this be? Uh, in excitement as an aspiring journalist, Tony decides to go around asking if anyone knows who the mysterious GGY is. Two girls redirect him to a boy named Axel, one of the top st scorers in the entire arcade, to see if he has information on GGY. Okay, let's get straight into it. Hanging back behind Axel, Tony watched the game screen. Axel was doing a great job of controlling the game's heroes. Little axe throwing bonbons. <laughs> yes! The bonbons drove their army tanks expertly through a dark, mottled landscape that looks like it was made of chocolate. Lifting his gaze from the play, Tony checked out the high scorer's roster on the game. Uh, ABC... Oh my gosh, I'm gonna sneeze again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, ABC held the third highest spot. Two others were initials Tony did not recognise. It appeared GGY did not play this game. When it says Bonbon bon game with like axe throwing, I think that's talking about that one game where they're wearing the Viking helmets. Like, we ha we'll have to check back at that arcade machine because if it does have ABC in the third highest spot, then that's like absolute confirmation this is in the games. I know it is already confirmed it's in the games, but like... That's, that's big, if that's a thing. Um, before Axel could put another token into the machine, Tony stopped his hand. That was cool, you're really good at this game. Axel looked at him like he was fucking crazy for interrupting his gameplay. What's your deal? Tony frowned. My deal? I don't have a deal. Sure you do. You wouldn't be talking to me if you didn't have a deal. Tony sighed. He decided to get straight to the point. Okay, GGY scores are higher than anyone else's. You two have the best scorers on these minigames. Um... But GGYs are, like, in another reality. Some people told me you probably would know something. Who told you? Axel said. T 
Tony then says their initials were KXT and CRF. Ugh. Kenzie and Crystal, those snobs, Axel said. Haha, <laughs> yeah, Tony said, trying to appeal to him. All right, listen, I don't know who GGY is. Nobody does. There's a, they are a legend around here. Dude's like a ghost. A, a dude? Tony said. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be a dude. Axel sexist. That doesn't make any sense though. His scores are way too high. Wouldn't anyone see him? Tony said. Axel rubbed his chin. Yeah, never made sense. You'd think with someone with scores that high would want to be, or you'd think with someone scores that high, they would want to be in the limelight, you know? He was right. How come Gregory didn't want any credit for their work? I'm going to say Gregory because GGY is just a pain to say. Actually, no, it's not. It's not. It's the same amount of syllables. <laughs> Gregory, GGY. I'll just say GGY. Uh, Axel continued to play, leaning on the joystick of the Bunbarians. I was right. I was right. That's the name of that arcade machine. Um, Quick quick thing I want to say is, remember when Scott... Remember when it was explicitly said that Scott... um. Like, gave Steel Wool some of the designs for the arcade machines. This is probably why. Genuinely, this is probably why. I don't think there's any other reason that there could be that he would want to include his own Easter eggs. It's probably because he's trying to compare, or sorry, create the books at the same time as creating the games and make sure it's consistent so that um, it's easier for us to connect the two. Um, Tony then scouts the rest of the Fauscade, looking to see if he can find any other patrons that might know who Gregory is or have some lead. Tony's a smart child, especially for an aspiring journalist, and decides that he shouldn't go asking random people all at once. Instead, he just wants to find an employee. And just as he thought, he ran into what he was looking for. Without looking, he bumped right into a Fauscade employee, losing his balance and falling legs up. Whoa, well, little man, didn't see you there. Sorry about that, the attendant said in a laid-back, drawn-out, lazy tone. This dude is the Argyle of FNAF, true. Well, man, sorry about that. Oh, I think that was supposed to be Tony, but whatever. Uh, the attendant jerked Tony into an upright position, then grasped Tony's arms to steady him. The guy's hands were strong, and Tony felt like a little kid when the guy gave Tony's shoulder a pat. It's okay, I shouldn't have been clumsy, Tony said. He looked up at the attendant's name tag. It read Finbar. Finbar? That's an Irish name, right? Tony said. Hey, 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 how about that? Polite and not all me, 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 Finbar cocked his head. Yep, means fair head. Now he's talking about how his mum is Irish like it's the wildest shit ever. Okay, filler aside. My name's Tarbell, Tony's pen name. All right, Tarbell, hold that thought one moment. Walk with me. I need to keep an eye on this zoo. Apparently there's a screaming child and ruckus going on that they're going to investigate. A few feet away, a pigtailed girl Tony recognised from school. Her name was Amelia and he didn't like her at all. Started cooking a fruity maze- oh, oh! Oh! Fruity maze arcade in front of them. What? Fruity, fruity maze literally got a shout out? Oh my god, this is insane. By the way, I'm really sorry if my lighting is bad in here or if my camera is bad. Uh, it's because I'm using my laptop camera, I don't really have any other good way of recording myself for a long period of time, but hopefully you'll be okay with it. it I mean, it's just for like, just just so it's there, you know? <laughs> um, Amelia was kicking the car under as the cabinet read its game over screen. She screamed at the machine, you can't do that! Tony smiled, Finbar sighed and yelled out, Hey princess! Princess, Princess Quest, you break that and your mummy and daddy are going to have to pay for it and they're not going to be happy with you. I'm not a princess, jerk, and you're lying. You can't stop me. She continued to kick the arcade machine. Um, Finbar sighed. He took a walkie-talkie hanging on the lanyard around his thick neck. PC on... F <laughs> eh, sorry. PC on F level 2 aisle 7. In a few minutes... A sluggish-looking security guard came by inside. He was clearly not enjoying his job. He motioned Amelia to follow. Finbar turned around and smiled at Tony. Yeah, man, so what's your question? I've been trying to figure out who GGY is. GGY is... I'm very aware of GGY, Finbar said. Not sure any of the other arcade attendants are. Most of them just dial it in, you know, put in their hours and get it done. Me, though, I like to at least put in some an honest day's work. Over time, I did notice. I asked a guy to run diagnostics on the machines GGY scored so high on. I was so sure the dude or dudette hacked the machine, but the tech dude said it was all normal. 
So then how does, does GGY get high scores? Finbar cut in, no idea. How come nobody Finbar interrupted Tony again? Seen them do it? Good question, like I said. It's a mystery. GGY is flying way under the radar, whoever that is. My guess is the kid is probably sneaking in at night. Do -do -do. Oh, I forgot the Fortnite music. Um, oh, dun, da -ba -da 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 -da. Um, <laughs> an employee guard doesn't let you in and out of the building, only security badges do that, and those are even more closely guarded. Sometimes my fellow co-workers get lazy, it's easy to steal an employee pass and run off with it. My guess is the kid probably went off with one of them. After getting in any info from Finbar that he could, Tony began walking through the arcade. He's theorizing that hypothetically if he stole an employee pass, he could lose it to look up in the Pizzaplex database <gasps> to see more about GGY's profile by using an employee's kiosk. As Tony kept walking, he was disoriented by a bright luminous white light in a, his peripheral vision. Tony turned. He looked up into the gleaming white eyes of Glamrock Freddy, the big orange animatronic bear with red armored shoulder pads and black top hat. Tony was a bit unsettled as he stared into the robot's eyes. Thinking Freddy was just being friendly, Tony waved at him. Friendly continued his unmoving gaze. He did not wave back, his head simply tracing Tony's movements as he walked. Tony wanted to get out. Now, something told him he was in danger. He panicked and nearly ran out of the Fazcade. Uh, it cuts to him in his bedroom at the end of the day. He's unsettled by his encounter by Glamrock Freddy. He can't shake the feeling why he's so terrified by the bear. Still intrigued by the mystery of GGY, Tony decides to go and make 30 accounts on multiple forums asking for information about GGY. Bro's username is Digger1. <laughs> he wanted so desperately to dig deeper into the GGY rabbit hole. Oh, very nice writing. Very nice. After a full night of asking questions with no responses, he called it quits until he got a DM. New message from Morrigan 99 Why are you asking about people? Digger1 What do you mean? Morrigan99 Don't be dense. GGY What do you know about GGY? Digger1 Morrigan99 You do not know what you're getting yourself into. Morrigan99 DM me on the other forum tomorrow night at the same time. Morrigan99 went offline. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what this name is, but I'm not getting anything. I don't know what a Morrigan is. <laughs> he realized he added, uh, sorry, he had realized Morrigan added him on another forum, possibly as burner accounts. Tony is a small, unaware child to be in a situation like this. He wants to go deeper. Tony thought if he should go ahead um, and steal an employee's card, um, bef uh, sorry, Tony thought if he should go ahead and steal an employee's card to find out more before he spoke with Morrigan again tomorrow. No, that wouldn't be a good idea, he told himself. What if things went wrong? So he decided he wasn't going to go until he found himself at the Mega Pizzaplex the next day, scouting for employees. Tony stood in the main lobby of the Mega Pizzaplex. Tony then spotted an employee who was busy redirecting a family with two screaming girls who were pulling off pant legs of their father. Perfect. Um... Tony stepped behind the employee and pretended to slip on the black and white checkered floor. He let, out a, he let out a yelp. Oh my goodness, are you okay? The employee said. As she helped him up, he looked up at her lanyard, which read Katie, and saw the pass dangling. Uh, he winced and groaned as he slipped the keycard off her yan lanyard, oh my gosh, and into the pocket as she helped him get up. <laughs> How does he do that? What? Tony now wants to get as far away from Katie as possible. After finally getting away from her, she got caught up in another issue with the customer. He ran off to a kiosk. Luck was on his side again, as there were little people around the kiosks due to the Glamrocks pre uh, performing a show on a makeshift stage in the lobby. Uh, shit gets good here? Okay. Alright. Because the kiosks had observation windows, Tony knew he had to stay out of sight. He'd already thought this through, hoping that the keyboard had a long cord, or better yet, was cordless. Tony grabbed the keyboard. Score! It was cordless. Cordless, sorry. Following the plan that he'd come up with the night, be the night before, Tony rapidly scrolled through the databases looking for GGY. He found GGY in the fifth database he tried. Tony sucked in his breath when he spotted GGY on a list of issued Pizzaplex play passes. Clicking on the play pass in question, Tony frowned. Tony wasn't a hacker, but he was reasonably good on the computer. Because of that, he was able to spot that the play pass issued to GGY had been modified. Ooh. 
Although play passes were supposed to be designed to simply give frequent players access to all games without need of tokens, this one had been more modified into a security badge than a play pass. The card issued to GGY, according to the computer, had more than just the usual barcode. It also had the semi-transparent Fazbear Company logo that security badges had, and it had a magnetic strip. Tony was sure that with this card, GGY could get into any employee-only area they wanted. Next to the hacked play pass was a list of three names. It looked like GGY had used the pass to get other people into the pizza flex after closing. Tony strained to see the names. Maybe they um, might lead him to GGY. Craning his neck, Tony saw the name Mary on the screen, but he couldn't see her last name. The other two he didn't get a look at, but he saw the first few initials, Ray and T-R-E. <laughs> um, Tony heard scuffling by the kiosk and decides... Um, and decides to, as the book quotes, crab walk out of the kiosk. Good way to describe it, honestly. As Tony retreated to a nearby crowd, a large flash of luminous white caught his attention. Using his, using his peripheral vision, profiteral vision, uh, he met exactly what he expected to see, Glamrock Freddy. This time, he was moving. As Tony began to walk, Freddy paced closely behind him, mirroring his mov movements. Freddy is speeding up when he speeds up. He is being followed by Freddy and his instincts are ki kicking in. Goosebumps erupted on his skin. Were the animatronics programmed for security as well? Glamrock Freddy might have seen him leave the kiosk. Once again, Tony ran for his life away from Freddy. He manages to get away, time skipping to him at home again. Scared shitless of what he's discovered, yet intrigued. New message from Morrigan99. What do you know? GGY is using a hacked play pass to get into, in to get into inaccessible areas in the pizzaplex. Impressive for a kid. Tony's breath sucked in. A kid? How did Morrigan know Tony was a kid? How do you know I'm a kid? I know who you are. You're playing with fire. Meet me at the high school by the bleachers in 30 minutes. Alone. I want you to guess what Tony does. Yes, it's a horror story, so he goes. Oh boy. He grabbed his bike, snuck out his wind. I, I, but wait, sorry. I reckon this Morrigan guy is GGY. Uh, I reckon... I don't know what that means for the story, because people said that that was a massive lore drop. Maybe they were trolling. <laughs> but like... I, I have a feeling it's that's where it's going, that Morrigan is actually GGY. Or he has like a death wish towards GGY or something. I don't know. What 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 is the relationship between GGY and Morrigan here? I'm very confused. By the time um oh sorry, he grabbed his bike, snuck out his window with a poncho and an aluminium bat. It is raining outside. By the time Tony arrived at the high school it was pouring. He couldn't lie to himself, he was thoroughly spooked. Um, okay. Tonight, the hundred yards of artificial turf, barely illuminated by a few weak security lights at the edges, looked like a vast pool filled with murky water. He held up his bat. Tony exhaled loudly. Get a grip, he told himself. He listened to his surroundings. The wind and rain pushed the back of his poncho up and down. The rain wrapped and tapped a staccato rhythm on Tony's poncho, and at first he could hear little else but water's incessant beat. But then, behind Tony, something clanked near the bleachers. Tony spun toward the sound and tried to see into the dark shadows tucked inside the steady rain. Get over here, a teen's girl's voice uh, called out. Tony grabbed his bat tighter. Come on, the girl called. I won't bite you, and if I try, you can whap me with that bat. Tony walked toward the girl. She's wearing a full black poncho. Her face is obscured. They're getting under the bleachers so it's not so rainy before she reveals herself. Womp womp womp, it's just the girl from the arcade earlier. Is it? Oh, okay, it's it's not. Oh, the girl was in the preview? Oh, whatever, let's just keep reading. She took off her poncho hood and Tony stared at a girl with two long black braids. <laughs> it's you, the girl from the arcade. Crystal, right? Oh, Crystal, okay. Crystal told him to shush. You talked to Axel, Crystal said. You never told us your name. Tony, he blurted out without thinking. He forgot to use his own pen name. Okay, Tony, Crystal said, glancing over her shoulders. How do you know it was me? Crystal smirked at him. You do realise you're like the only one going around asking about Gregory, right? It's kind of obvious. Listen, I think you're sticking your nose into something that could get you into trouble, Crystal said. All I'm trying to do is find out who GGY is. Exactly. And that's probably not a great idea, Crystal said. I'm going to tell you something. 
And if I find out you've told someone else, that baseball bat won't be useful defending you. My hobby, she said, which I do for the fun of it, is hacking. Huh. Okay. I see where this is going. <laughs> I, I don't see where the story is going, but I think I know what the law reveal is, and I don't like it? I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> so... So, one second, okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, so... Patient 46, right? Patient 46, um... Wait, Patient 46 didn't know what a hacker was, or did know what a hacker was? There was something to do with someone hacking, and I'm pretty sure it was Patient 46. I think Patient 46, um, was a hacker. Right? She, like, they were very good at hacking. So, all I know is that I, f I have a feeling that that's, I mean, it's either a really cool reference or it's actually relating to Patient 46. And if it is, I have the worst feeling in my stomach right now. And like, I might actually puke if it happens, <laughs> that Gregory is going to be revealed to be Patient 46. And if that's a thing that happens in this story, fair enough, I'll go and puke outside the video uh, <laughs> so, that you, you, that, so that I get monetized or whatever. No, I'm joking. Um, but, uh, oh no, I have a feeling that's where it's heading. Don't ask me why I think that. I, I just think that we're getting Patient 46 themes. Uh, and from, like, from what I've heard other people say, people have said, like, it's something that they don't like, but it's a massive lore drop, so I have a feeling it's going to be that. Anyway, let's continue and see if that's true. I like to poke around and see what there is to see. Like GGY, Tony said. No, not like GGY. They have another agenda. What I looked into, Crystal said, glancing over her shoulders and returning her gaze to Tony, was the Pizzaplex animatronics code. I was curious as to how their behavior was chosen. For some reason, I found behaviors and inputs that shouldn't be there, controlling the animatronics in certain ways that weren't there originally. As a hacker, we usually leave behind a trace, like a signature or whatever. That's at least what I do. What I saw within the code of the glam rocks was strings of G's and Y's at random intervals. What? GGY seems to want to control the animatronics in very specific ways. No way. No way. This is confirming that, that Gregory is patient 46. I'm, I'm on to you, Scott. Uh, Steel wool. Um, because that would mean that Gregory is a hacker. So what does that mean for Gregory? You know, I, I want to do a whole theory video on this. Like, once I've read this, if there's enough to talk about, I want to do a theory video on it. Because this changes a lot about Gregory if it is true. But I don't know if it is true, so I need to keep reading. Uh, sorry for stopping. Um, G's and Y's, Tony repeats to himself. I don't believe in co uh, coincidences, Crystal said. I didn't think much of it first, but I pieced together when I saw you going around asking about GGY. I have a little brother, so I would have felt like a jerk if I didn't let you know. You need to be careful. Whoever it is, they're dangerous. Okay, fair enough. I just wanted to tell you what I know. Now I've done that. Crystal retreated back into the darkness, disappearing in the night. Tony, left alone in the dark, ran back to his bike, and he pedaled as fast as he could back to his home. Um, so there's time skips to a recap of Tony's next few days. Every time he vis visits the Pizzaplex, um, he is always unnerved because of the warning Crystal gave him, but also because Freddy watches him non-stop every time he's in the building. Let me guess. Gregory is in Freddy. Or Gregory is hacking Freddy, and therefore, um, Gregory is watching him. Try and solve him. Uh, after going home that night, he begins to work on his group project. GGY had a plan, Tony wrote. He has decided to write his story about GGY. Okay. And it was a plan that they weren't going to share with anyone. Working behind the scenes, wraith-like, worming their way into the dark maze of the Peterplex's restricted areas. GGY left only the sub-list trail behind. Did they leave the trail on purpose, teasing anyone who dared to follow their convoluted intentions? Or were they so overconfident in their clearly superior hacking abilities that their carelessness left the occasional faint footprint? After GGY adjusted the animatronics code, Tony wrote, they became their new leader. Fazbear Entertainment 
may have thought the animatronics were in their control, but they weren't. The Glamrock stars of the Pizzaplex, Freddy and Chica and Roxy and Monty, continued to act normally most of the time, but in truth, under the facade of their normal duties, they were becoming GGY's minions. Um, furtively moving in and out of the shadows, avoiding security guards and cameras, is something only GGY knows. The end. This is brilliant frickin' writing, by the way. I'm amazing. Like, I'm astounded. Um, also, thing to note, timeline placement. Freddy and Chica and Roxy and Monty. Monty's there, not Bonnie. Something to note. Uh, Tony saved his document. Uh, 20 or so pages left, okay. When Tony was writing, his concentration turned out of out the world. Oh, sorry, tuned out the world. His mother had often told him that aliens could come through his window and throw a party in his room while Tony was writing and he wouldn't notice. That might have been a bit of an exaggeration. I don't think anyone should um, leave right now. Okay, okay, so it's gonna get good. Now that Tony was out of his writing zone, he heard his grandma's TV blasting as usual. A news anchor started talking. The family of Mary Schneider, Mary, a school counsellor. A school counsellor who disappeared nearly five months ago has made another appeal to law enforcement and the public. This is about patient 46. It has to be. There's no other place you can go uh, with this. Uh, Tony frowned and memory was trying to clamour out of the thick stew of thoughts in his brain. What was it? Poor Mrs Schneider, Tony thought. Everyone in the school had known Mary Schneider, even though Tony had never met with her. He'd seen her in the halls. Tony shook his head and yawned. He still felt like there was something he needed to remember, but he was too tired to figure it out. Maybe I'll think of it in the morning, Tony thought as he headed to the bathroom to brush his teeth. Um, the story is constantly going to be vine boon moments from now. Okay. The title of the paper read, The Mystery of GGY. Hey, Rab, what do you think? Rab read the title. His expression was unreadable. Rab is 100% Gregory, 100%! Because now he's showing Rab th that he's got the mystery sorted. Rab is gonna try and freaking kill him! He put the paper in his book bag. I'll read it later. <laughs> Rab! Oh, I don't know why I'm so excited about Rab, but I, Rab is 100% Gregory. Like, I have you solved. I have you solved. <clears throat> um... Tony, Rab and Boots are now walking down the hallway in school and Tony asks Rab and Boots if they can revise his story because he has to go paint the neighbor's basement tonight for pocket catch. I'm going to be late tomorrow. No can do, Rab said. <laughs> Why are you going to be late, man? Why are you going to be late? <laughs> are you going to go and hack some animatronics? Uh, Boots cut in. Rab and I will work out, uh, work on it in the evening. It's fine. Tony is beginning to wish he never teamed up with them. Time skips to him painting in the basement. It's calm. Nothing happens. It's painting for the rest of the book. Uh, no. As he watched the paint drip, what was nagging him this morning finally came to him. Mary! Tony yelled. He trips and the paint splatters down. He can. He starts coughing. Uh, he, he no care because he has revelation. Uh, Tony stepped forward and swiped his roller off the drip as he thought about the name that he'd seen on the computer in his Pizzaplex kiosk. One of the people GGY's hacked play pass had let into the Pizzaplex after hours was someone named Mary. Wait a second, so... Gregory's hacked play pass let... Mary and the other therapists into the Pizzaplex after hours. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if that makes sense. I'm not, I don't know. I'm trying to piece it together still. Could the Mary that GGY had led into the Pizzaplex have been Mary Schneider, the missing counsellor? If, if Tony's suspicions were correct, GGY was up to something in the Pizzaplex. Crystal had said she thought so too. What if Gregory had something to do with a missing counsellor? Um, Tony got on his bike and coasted down the Browning's driveway. Okay, he said to himself as he started to pedal. I think GGY is a kid. If they're a kid, they probably go to my school. If they go to my school, they probably knew Mary Schneider. Rab. <laughs> he needed to find more about Mary Schneider, but how? He pressed his lips. It was late. His mom would be asleep and his grandfather would be busy watching TV. Or oh, grandmother, sorry. He made his decision and began biking in the direction of his school. As he reaches the school, he sneaks in using a secret way 
through a broken limestone that he and his friends, Boots and Rab, had found together. Nobody else know, knew about the entrance. The last time Tony had snuck into the school, he'd had his friends with him. Being alone, he discovered, was a little scarier. Tony had to clamp down his normal active imagination as he crept past the lumpy hulk of the school's furnace and several stacks of dusty boxes and crates. On the bike ride to the school, Tony had decided that his best chance of accessing the school's records was via Mrs. Mrs. Hawking's computer. Mrs. Hawking's, the uh, grandmotherly librarian with a pun-heavy sense of humour and seemingly endless energy, had an office, not much more than an alcove, near the back of the school library. It wasn't a space that could be locked, so her computer could be easily as accessed. Uh, Tony had worked with Mrs. Hawkins on so many projects. He was one of her favourites, or so she said, because he was so curious and so eager. She often had him join her in her office so she could help him research. Because of this, he knew her password. Although the school was ancient, Tony knew it had some internal security. That security, however, was sparse. And Tony, because his curiosity made him aware of all sorts of little details, knew where the cameras were. He could easily avoid them. He duck-walked until he knew what uh, he was past the range of the library's CCTV. Then Tony took a seat in Mrs. Hawkins' white leather desk chair. Tony pulled out his flashlight and shone it on Mrs. Hawkins' keyboard. He quickly typed in her password, Shelley and PT. Of course, she had typed the usernames of her grand or the usernames of the two names of her grandchildren. Tony quickly found the personnel records. They were organized by position. He clicked on counselors. Mary's file stood out immediately, but something was off. Tony froze. Um, the counselor list was long, but each name had a date to indicate the counsellor's tenure at the school. Only four of the names had dates within the last couple of years. Tony figured those were the only ones that were relevant. The Pizzaplex wasn't even around before then. Oh. Raylin Lawrence had replaced Mary Schneider and she'd only worked there a month. Trina Welsh had been the next counsellor and she had lasted just seven weeks. The current counsellor was Georgia Lowe, who had started a month before. Wait, so he needs to find Georgia. Uh, Tony clicked on Mary Schneider's file. There wasn't much to it, just a resume, a few performance reports and a summary page. Tony skimmed through everything quickly, although the summary page noted under reason for exit that Mary Schneider was missing disappearance under investigation. Nothing else in the file was remotely interesting. Tony backtracked and clicked on Raylan Lawrence's file, which was Similarly sparse, Tony clicked on the summary page. He sucked in his breath. Raylin, reason for exit, missing. He checked Trina's. Trina was missing too. Three of the four women were missing. This is amazing. <laughs> this is so cool. This is amazing. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention Mary worked there for three years. The Plex didn't exist prior to her employment. Also, the whole thing isn't over yet. There's still more big drops. Wow, okay. So wait, Mary worked there for three years. So three years, wait. Mary worked there for three years. I'm trying to piece together when this is. Because this is before, well, of course the story is during the pizza flex, but uh, the therapy. Because if we can get a good gauge of when the therapist tapes take place, that means a lot, I think, like for the timeline, I would say. Uh, it, it like connects a lot of dots in, in AR and especially VR even because of um, because of the importation of glitch trap. So that's uh, something to, to note. Um, why hadn't that been mentioned on the news report about Mary Schneider that Tony had heard that other night? He tapped his fingers on Mrs. Hawkins desk. Maybe the school was trying to keep it quiet. You could sure understand it if they were. Then he remembered, Ray and Trey. Suddenly he hears a noise scatter within the building. He's not alone. How would that be possible though? Only Boots and Rab knew the secret entrance. Because frickin' Rab is Gregory! Uh, was it a house? Oh, sorry, a mouse maybe? Or something else? There's ten pages left. The counsellors must have met with GGY and maybe, one by one, they'd caught on to whatever GGY was doing at the Pizzaplex and maybe other places too. Who knew what Gregory was capable of? Clearly they were brilliant. Brilliance could be used for good and bad. What if the counsellors had discovered what GGY was doing? And what if they'd known that they were onto him? 
Uh, and what if they'd lured him somehow to the pizzaplex to do away with them? Aha. Deep within the building, something began to shuffle. That was Tony's cue to get out of there. And so he did. It time skips to the next day at the beginning of school as he's waiting for Boots to show the revised paper. You're not going to believe what I found, Tony whispered to Boots. Last night, I... We added more to the story, Boots interrupted. Go ahead, read it. Um, GGY was the wizard's most favoured apprentice. Tony yelped when he read that line that had replaced Tony's description of GGY's high arcade game scores. Cool, right? It was Rab's idea. We were right, lads. We were right. Rab's is Gregory. After reading the second page of the story, which described the corporate conspiracy that somehow reached another planet where the wizard resided, Tony's head began to throb. When he saw the description of GGY's control over the animatronics attended to an animatronic supervillain who went into battle with a tentacled monster- WHAT?! WHAT?! Okay, wait, I need to re-read that slowly. When he saw his description of GGY's control over the animatronics had turned into an animatronic supervillain who went into battle with a tentacled monster... The Blob? Nightmare on? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't know if it's actually like a tentacled monster, but yeah. Um, Tony was pretty sure his ears were emitting steam similar to what was swirling along the surface of the step he stood on. They had ruined his story. Tony is now storming off to class because he's pissed. You're welcome, Boots said. No, not Boots, Ellis. He was done calling Ellis by his pen name. It doesn't name Rab, but keep reading. Oh, I reckon uh, he's gonna... I reckon he knew this entire time that Rab's name was Greg. Uh, but he he just always used Rab's pen name, which is Rab. Uh, I reckon that's probably something. Or did we know Rab's name before he was called Rab? I don't know. But I reckon he pieces it together like, Oh my god, Rab's name is actually Gregory? I didn't even think about this. Um, Tony was striding out into the hallway when he heard his name over the school's loudspeaker. Tony Becker, a woman's voice uh, cracked, crackled, sorry. Please report to Mr. Adkins' office immediately. Tony goes to Mr. Adkins. Uh, it has come to my attention, Mr. Adkins said as soon as Tony sat, that you snuck into Mrs. Hawkins' office last night. How? You were caught on camera. He's lying, Tony thought. He knew where the cameras were. Someone snitched. But who? After school, you'll go back to the library for detention. You can explain to Mrs. Hawkins why you violated her space, and you can also do whatever tasks she deems appropriate. Capiche? Uh, he goes into detention, and Mrs. Hawkins is actually rather understanding of it, and thinks he was simply doing research, although he didn't tell her what. But she still had to give him a punishment, since Tony is a good child, he decides to go help her put some books up. Before Tony could put the book in the spot he needed to go, he heard his name be called. He looked up to see the other culprit who ruined his story. The story destroyer grinned at Tony. Boots said you weren't happy with the changes we made to your story, he said. Sorry we did so much to it. We might have gone and carried away, but we were just trying to make it more entertaining. Tony looked up at Rab. Thanks, Greg. I freaking called it! Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Oh no. Um. <laughs> I'm saying oh no because. First of all, that's confirmation that Gregory is in the story and GGY is in fact Greg. I mean, I think we knew that already. But this is undeniable evidence that Gregory is patient 46, which I did not see coming, by the way. I woke up this morning thinking that patient 46 was Tape Girl. I Because I, I think Tape Girl still has something to do with this whole story. I don't think she's done. Like, um... She she didn't escape Glitchtrap. She's still infected by Glitchtrap. There's probably other people infected by Glitchtrap at this point as well. Uh, that could be Patient 46. But, like, uh, Gregory was the last person I thought could be Patient 46. So, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put together a video kind of 
rewinding. Like, like, let me know if you if you would like this idea and if you'd like me to upload it sometime soon. Uh, or maybe I'd have to do it when the book actually comes out. I don't know. Let me know. But um, maybe we I'll do a video like rewind. Like, let's let's just go back on the security breach law. Let's go back to the beginning and think about how Gregory fits in here with patient 46. Um, I think that's something we have to do. But man, oh man, Gregory is patient 46. So like one of my biggest points against that was like, um, why is a, a kid getting therapy? This kind of does explain it, honestly, because it's school counselors, right? That they are counselors and that's what they do. They're, they're good with children uh, and they, yeah, oh, that does, it's it, like, it takes something like small. I know this isn't small, but like it takes something small like this to make you reevaluate everything and think, yeah, that, that kind of was where it was going. Um, wow, 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 wow. <sighs> Tony looked up at Rab. Thanks, Greg. Like Ellis, Tony was done calling Greg by his nickname, Rab. It was Greg from here on out. When Greg didn't move off, Tony raised a hand and said, see you tomorrow. Ah. Uh, Gregory began to walk off, but then he stopped. Greg returned the wave. He smiled, then he cocked his head and studied Tony for several seconds. For some reason, Greg's scrutiny made Tony want to squirm. Before Tony could figure out what made him feel so freaked out, Greg began to walk away again. Then he stopped. Listen. How about you meet me in the Plex in an hour or so when your detention is over? I have some people I want you to meet. We'll have some fun, and you'll forget all about the story and getting detentions. Um, the, the way this next line is formatted. Tony wasn't all that keen on going back to the pizza plex. He couldn't be in the place now without thinking of GGY and the modified animatronics. Come on, Greg said. Say yes, we'll get you all cheered up. Okay. Okay. And that's the end, by the way, that's the end. First point. That feels like an incomplete story. Right? Is it just me that feels that's really incomplete? Although I guess the complete story is security breach, right? Like, this is Gregory. This changes so much. This genuinely, like, what's going on? Because we thought that Gregory was a missing child as well. We thought that Gregory was a robot built by Michael. We thought that Gregory was possessed by the crying child, but like... I'm really confused now. Like, everything about Security Breach has just kind of changed. Like, uh, my perspective is just, like, warped. That's really interesting. Well, that's that's a great story. Um, aside from, like, let's, let's take law implications out of this. Good story. I would say, I wouldn't say it's the one of the best. It's pretty cool, though, that we got, like, we had all the information at the start, I would say. And... Oh my god, I love the foreshadowing in the description. It leads him down a rabbit hole. Of course it leads him down a rabbit hole because Rab is freaking Gregory. So, um, that's that's great foreshadowing right there. And uh, wasn't there like a weird thing that happened in the window at the start of the story in the preview? I don't remember, but like I, I think that's unexplained. Anyway. Wow. Uh, I really like that, um, I actually really like that Tony doesn't find out, like, like, Tony isn't, like, Tony doesn't piece it together that, uh, Greg is GGY. I like that, actually. Um, wow, so Gregory, <laughs> Gregory is evil. Gregory has control of the animatronics. Gregory sneaks in at night. There's a lot of things, like, there's there's so much revaluation that we need to do. Uh, this image has different context now, yeah. Yeah, it does. Gregory is in the screen saying, help me. Well, I, I don't know if that has different context, but... Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> bit more fucked. I like this. That's funny. Because, like, he's... Yeah. So Gregory really is evil. Like, I, I didn't even think about the fact that he also, like, shatters the animatronics and stuff. So, like, Gregory has... Is holding up the strings on a lot of things. So is, is Vanny the good guy? <laughs> um... So next time we're going to be doing the storyteller. What what a what a ride this story was. Like that that was great. That was really good. I I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite stories, no. But like lore reveals phew, insane. Uh absolutely insane. I kind of called it, I'll be honest. I kind of called it halfway through the story that it was going to be a patient 46 reveal, and I also kind of called it that Rab was Gregory. So it's kind of, I guess it was kind of predictable, but like, you also had to put the dots together. Um, yeah. Wow! Well done, Scott. Well done, Steelball. Well done, writers of the story. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Uh, and next time we will be doing the storyteller, so that's gonna be interesting. Glitch trap story, perhaps? Maybe, I don't know. Goodbye. <laughs>